Yes. How would you assess? Uh, I know it's still early, but how would yes. you assess the Biden Harris administration so far? I think, first of all, I think Biden has been very successful. I think it's true that he was the only person that could have won that election. Let's just be clear. That's why Trump was afraid of him. That's why he tried to undermine him. That's why he committed impeachable offenses to try and stop him, because he understood the case that Trump always has made is that he's the working class white man's hero. And it's not true. He's not working class. He's nobody's hero. He didn't give a shit about those people. He wouldn't wipe his ass with any of his supporters. Let's just be clear. He despises those people. He doesn't give a damn about them. Note, they all went on January 6th to try to restore him to office and he pardoned zero of them. He pardoned none of them because he don't give a damn about them. He didn't even pardon his own kids. He didn't care about anybody. So reality, um, the Democrats need to try to appeal to at least some of those work, white working class people to survive, right? They need 60% of the white vote and they need 80% of the non-white vote in order to win um, elections. So Biden is the only guy who could have pulled that off because he's not scary. He's not black. He's not a woman. He's not a person of color in any way. He's an old white guy and he's a moderate middle of the road white guy. He's comforting. He's like a grandpa. And so he was the right guy to win. I think he's been successful because he got shots and checks out. That's what he said he was going to do. He got you all your shots. He got you your checks. COVID rates going down. That's great for him. Those checks went out. Great for him. They stopped more. They stopped evictions for a while. But people have a short memory. Voters have the shortest memory in the world and they're going to run out of love for him by 2022 if he doesn't do new stuff you got to keep mm -hmm. giving people stuff in order to win so i think right now i would give him an i would give him a b plus a minus um because i think they haven't been aggressive enough on some things but i think they've done pretty well um it, it seems like and i don't know if this is by design or is this part of uh the um strategy especially if you're trying to perhaps usher in the first female president first black woman obviously but did they just say all the tough shit let's just give it to Kamala Harris immigration boom that show it's like what uh I didn't notice that huh I didn't <laughs> notice that I was like I'm sorry I did she all of a sudden she has to solve all of the the messiest shit that we have going on in America mm -hmm. Um, do you think this was by design? Like, mm -hmm. how did she wind up taking on these seemingly unwinnable problems? Um, I think part of the strategy in the Biden-Harris administration is to keep Biden above the fray and put Harris in the fray. And which tells me either that they believe that either they think giving her this portfolio allows her to tackle the big stuff so they can give her a, a preview to see how she handles it, to see if if he didn't run in 2024, how would these issues impact her? And they're letting her just jump in the deep end and see how it goes. Or they're using her as like a pin cushion to keep him from, you know, taking any hits. Um, or he's running for reelection and he's like trying to keep himself clean. Hmm. Um what did you make of her speech telling um, people not to come to America? That's she's taking a lot of hit, he, hits for that. Mm -hmm. I, what I what I took from that, uh, having been involved a little bit on the political side in the as a the press secretary, the messaging there was I need to inoculate the administration on the border. I think it was purely political. I think it was purely give her a soundbite that is going to sting on the left and get people mad at her on the left, but that is irrefutable and that cannot be manipulated by Fox News. So mm -hmm. I think they did that in order to make sure that the, the one soundbite that traveled everywhere was unmistakably not drawing more people to the border because they, they feel that that's a vulnerability. <clears throat> it, it reminded me a lot of Stacey Abrams. Um, I think it was very strategic and purposeful that when Major League Baseball pulled their all-star yes. game, that she did not go on the record and say, right. you need to boycott Atlanta. That's right. Because what she didn't want is for when she runs for governor, <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. for somebody to come out with a commercial, see Stacey Abrams doesn't care about the people of Georgia. That's right. She wanted people to stay away from here. And as much as I may have been personally disappointed, I understood mm -hmm. the strategy. That's right. Because I could take a personal disappointment if Stacey Abrams wind up being the governor. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, yeah. But that gets to sort of this very tricky, difficult dance that black women have to do in politics. We yeah. see now the, the one of the biggest stories, if not the biggest story from the election was black women and their political power. 
how do you see us using the power that has been attained and becoming the voting block that we've become and using it going forward, particularly in midterms? Do you yes. see more of us getting into this? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I thought Andrew Yang had won that election. I, 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 <laughs> that's right. That's I right. Forgot. I forgot. My bad. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew Yang, Yang run the presidency. Not he Stacey won the Abrams. presidency. That's right. <laughs> no. Um, uh, I, so here's the thing. And this is where this is almost like now. This is like this is like our group chat live. Right. There's what we want to hear as black women and what viscerally we need to hear in order to understand that somebody is with us. And then there's what you got to do to win. These ain't the same thing. And so I think what black, what we need to understand, right? What King does doesn't work if there's no Malcolm X, right? Because remember, set Malcolm X aside, King was seen as this radical, crazy person. He was seen as a madman. If you go back and look at just the cartoons about him, he was seen as somebody who, oh. when he steps into your city, a riot goes off. I mean, they, they basically painted him as the leader of the Communist Party. Correct. A <laughs> yeah. communist in under the control of Jewish communists a Marxist, all the same stuff they say about Black Lives Matter, they said that about King. Suddenly put Malcolm X on the table. King looks a lot better. He looks viable, right? He looks much more viable in comparison. You know, sometimes having a separate, more radical voice can actually empower your main strategic voice. You know, I would say the same thing about Jesse Jackson and Reverend Sharpton. Jesse, on his own, he runs for president. He gets millions of people registered to vote. This is like the most dangerous black man in America. He's seen as a radical. He had the same exact, I mean, Bernie Sanders basically adopted his whole platform when Bernie ran. That was his platform. Everything down to even Palestinian rights. That's Jesse. You put Sharpton on the table and everybody goes, oh, hell no. Where's Jesse? <laughs> Bring him over here and let him negotiate. We want to talk to you, Jesse. Sharpton? Hell no. Right? And so Sh Sharpton winds up really kind of empowering that movement around Jesse Jackson in which he can cut the kind of deals that he cuts to change the way that the delegates are awarded. Um, Cause the fear of a, you know, a, the, this alternative that's out there that's younger and that's more angry. And so I think it, to me, as a person who thinks strategically about politics, I'm not mad at Kamala Harris doing what she's doing because I understand that this thing she said the second day was, the, was, was really more her policy position. The second day, she had a more nuanced conversation about what we got to do about the border. But that sister can't get up there and say, come, she will be finished politically. Do we want her to be president one day? Do we want to use our power to one day have a black woman president? She had to say what she had to say. I can excuse that. I, I, like you, I can take that personal slight for that moment because I knew she needed to say it. As far as our power politically right now, we're about to have at least three black women running statewide um, in South Carolina, North Carolina, and Florida. Democrats better fall on their knees and tell the Lord thank you. Because black women, despite the fact that they are not giving us what we deserve, the respect we deserve, the help we deserve, the back and we deserve, we're still helping them out. Those three women on that ballot are the best thing to happen to the Democratic Party because we'll come out for us. We'll support us. We'll come out for Stacey. We're going to come out for Val. We're going to come out for that sister in South Carolina. We'll come out and y'all need us in those states. So just tell the Lord, thank you, Democrats. We're going to give y'all another cycle, but you keep fucking up. And eventually we're going to say, do it yourselves. And then you yeah. won't be able to win. They're going to fuck around and find out. It's what, <laughs> what might happen. 